Hi everyone, my name is Michael Archambault and I'm here with Windows Phone Central today. We are talking to Jay Mashalani. He's a UI uh, and branding architect. You may have seen his work on Windows, on the Windows 8.2 concept that's been floating around the web. Uh, it's been quite popular and we've got a lot of uh, great feedback on it. So we wanted to sit down with Jay and really talk about uh, the inspiration behind the design uh, and how he feels that Windows 8.1 could be improved in 8.2. So how are you doing, Jay? I'm good, and you? Good, very good. Um, so to start, Windows 8, is that your primary use? Is that your primary machine? Uh, yeah, on my Surface Pro, my main computer, and my work laptop, Windows 8 everywhere. Okay, so you da you dabble a little bit in other OSs, right? Because in your blog post, you were talking about like Mac OS X and... Uh, how they looked compared to Windows 8? I, I Once I switched for a whole Apple ecosystem, so iPad, iOS, and um, OS 10 with the great MacBook Air. How is that? And, <laughs> look, it, it works great. It looks <laughs> great. But all those little things that is missing for true productive, you know, productive environment are missing for me that Windows just gives me. And I couldn't live with so that's ultimately what Microsoft is trying to solve, this idea that there's productive devices and there's not productive devices. The Surface is kind of this mashup, and that's why we have Windows 8 how it is. It's this balance, you know, it's this balancing act between a desktop OS and a tablet OS. So what are some of the inconsistencies? Because you handle, you did a lot of redesigning, and you changed also the way that a user interacts with either uh, the desktop or just with the uh, modern UI or Metro, as you still like to call it, um, which I think we all still like to call it. Uh, so what do, you, what do you think are some of the significant issues with Windows 8? Is it, is it a good idea? Is there just, there's problems with it? Uh, the idea of Windows 8, I think is amazing. Like when you just want to go on your couch and use your computer, here's a full touch UI in which you can actually do two things at the same time, which doesn't seem like a big thing. But if you have an iPad, you can't have a Skype conversation and still go on the internet. I think that's ridiculous in my opinion. Um, and the Surface still gives you that. The Metro UI gives you all of that great store and everything. And when you want to work, you just go to your desktop and you're able to work, right? Your Windows, everything is there. The problem is the way they manage both of them. Um, so the Metro environment falls back to the desktop a lot of times. And when you're working on the desktop, you're stuck with Metro elements when you don't want them. So that's where the issue is. It's really the, the balancing act. Uh, it, it's not on the Metro side. It's not on the desktop side. It's just crashed both of them, and it's not really well balanced. So you kind of you presented an idea where the two ecosystems are, uh, or no, I don't want to call them ecosystems. The two environments are are kind of split, right? In your yes. in your design, we had a you hold the start button, I believe, to switch between the two UIs. So yeah. how does that, which it looks great, how does that work, how would that work in your mind with uh, applications? So in my mind, uh, met, right now, Metro applications run on the Metro so environment, and the classic application runs on the desktop application, on the desktop, sorry, environment. So when you want to use one app, you're stuck in its environment. So you need to switch between both of them and that's where the problem is. Uh, in my opinion, an app is an app, and you choose the way you want to interact with it. So when I'm working, I want to manage my windows. I want to really get this on the side, this resized right there, and play with all of them. But when I'm just on a couch, well, gestures are amazing. I just take this app, put it on the side, take the other app, put it on the other side, and so on. So my way, the way I see it, is that when I'm on the desktop, Let's say I have Premiere Pro, like we've seen one of my mock-ups on the website. Mm -hmm. You have Premiere Pro, and you have, let's say, a, a Metro application, a modern app, on the desktop that I can interact with. For all the people who said, well, you can't move around, yes, I actually wrote that you would add an extra space on top. So it will be very easy to manage. And when you let press the Windows button, well, this application, the classic app, will just get, let's say, 60% of the screen. And the Metro application will just get you know the, the remaining 40%, and you use the slider between them to give more space or less space. So classic apps could run on Metro, just resize them in the designated space, 
and Metro application could work on the desktop without any problem. Just give them the, the controls you need for a pointer device. So you choose the environment. You choose the way you want to interact with those apps, with those files, with all the stuff in your computer. And you have a clean operating system that works in both cases. Okay. It, it's pretty evident when Microsoft released Windows 8 that it was a bit rushed. There was a lot of settings that were still stuck in the control panel. Uh, and then with 8.1, you know, they migrate a lot of the settings to the new Metro uh, settings area. Um, so there's definitely seems to be this rush with the desktop. Um, the, the concept that you laid out was a very nice desktop that matched. It matched the modern UI versus because, first of all, I mean, you had with Windows 8, you had the issue where you were, you were thrown between Metro and the desktop. And then they tried to add the... In 8.1, they added the same background, so you kind of had a smoother transition. But it still feels rushed. It feels like they're still kind of using Windows 7 legacy desktop with you know a few tweaks here and there. So with what you did in 8.2, we kind of almost get a, a feel for what Windows 8 is supposed to look like. So where did you did you, where did you go when you designed that? Did you actually did you try to finish what Microsoft is starting or did you go in a different direction when you picture the desktop for 8.2? Well, what I call, I call the whole research fixing Windows 8. So there's no innovation per se. It's no like of my ideas into how will I see Windows in the future. Uh, it's just taking what Microsoft wants Windows 8 to be and what they're trying to push and just make a product that in my opinion will be polished. Um, so the desktop needed more modern you know, elements, that's for sure. And bringing back the start menu as it is right now does not work because live tiles is very important. All those modern apps use live tiles and in the overall live tiles are amazing. So you want to have those tiles with you, but a lot of people do not want a full screen uh, view of all the tiles. So we bring back the start menu. Maybe. Yeah, actually, could, let's talk about that for a second because the start menu, um, I've been a big proponent of uh, I shouldn't say proponent. I've been very against uh, bringing the star menu back to Windows 8. I always thought that the idea to kind of backpedal looked bad. Uh, but then I saw your design, and it's it's beautiful because it's almost like you took the entire Metro screen and pushed it down into a confined space. I mean, there's still live tiles in that star screen, right? And oh. it, it feels very similar. And the whole thing will be very flexible. I mean, if you want a, a very tiny uh, start menu, no problem. If you want it to, have to be very big and have, I don't know, two rows of stock options with the live tiles, why not? You know, it's, a, it's your start menu. If you want to have it like a horizontal, I also have a design for it, no problem. It's just that when you're on a desktop, you need more flexibility, right? You're in the working environment. You need to tinker more with what you're working, what you're looking at. But when you're on Metro, well, it could be more, more, you know, I don't have to say it, uh, but you could just, you know, relax and use it, you, the interface that's already there, and it's less of a problem. It's just, it kind of sucks for the user to fall back to Metro. Right now, the desktop feels like an application inside of Metro, and that's where it's so. With the design changes that you introduced to 8.2, with the design concepts, is it more difficult, do you think, to run on hardware, any of the things you've introduced? Is anything too intense right now? you think Microsoft may have laid back a bit because of that? Or is what you designed is really not intensive at all in terms of power needed? I'm not sure if it will be more intensive in terms of power because right now you could get modern mix mm -hmm. from Stardock to run Metro apps in the, the desktop. You could get a uh, start, you know, start menu reviver or start eight, and get a start menu back. Um, you can actually run all those classic apps in the background while you're using Metro, so there's no, you know, power limitation if you're using it at the same time as a Metro app. So I think, you know, yes, a lot of people will saw the technical part. Well, no, they'll be asking too much. That'll be more difficult to integrate but it's your own operating system. You already have all those apps, already have all those managers. It won't take that much more power. Most of the solutions I'm bringing already exist. 
right? It's just yeah. that it's more integrated and more following Microsoft vision. And it be that complicated. There, there are definitely instances where we've seen designers who, um, you know, designers such as yourself who bring up uh, concepts and ideas and then Microsoft jumps on them because they do love the public reaction and you got a very positive public reaction. Um, why did you, why jump in? Why try and do an 8.2? Was it for yourself or did you want Microsoft to notice? To be very honest, uh, it was just a side project for fun. I was just designing it for fun. I wanted to design something. I love designing, fixing problems. And I actually have more redesigns coming. Uh, that wasn't my only project. That's the worst part. And it really exploded. Um, and I think the difference, the thing why it exploded is that I brought solutions backed with research. I actually had the research explanations and, you know, uh, the, the true problematic solution approach to what's happening. And Microsoft is doing an amazing job with Windows 8. I still think it's the best operating system right now. Um, they're pushing a lot their vision. And I think they went too far to actually go back. And now they're starting to go back. We saw it with the threshold news. Um, but you know, it's, it's to show them that there's very simple solutions that could be brought to the table. And you know, you could integrate it very fast. How long did the uh, project take? I started the project the 24th of September. You actually see it in the date. I no longer see you, by the way. Now you're back. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, I started the project in the end of September, the 24th, and I actually worked on it very, you know, from time to time, just a little, uh, one day for fun, one night for fun, and at the end, um, when I approached The Verge with the idea, and he said, look, there's news about Threshold that just came, yeah. that was like the timing, could you finish up everything for Thursday? Uh, now that was a big rush, but it was really like on the side, just for fun, writing it nearly on the toilet with my surface because I have nothing else to read on the internet. <laughs> that, that, so, was, that was going to be my next question. I was going to get meta for a second. I was going to say, so you're designing Windows 8 inside Windows 8. So I guess you use a Surface 2. That was your main? Yeah, a Surface Pro 2. That's Pro my main. Thing. Really? Okay. I started with the, the XPS 12 and then the Surface Pro 2. And those two machines are the best example of Windows. And a lot of people are whining that, well, I don't like your solution. Well, I have a good news for you. If you like the desktop, just stay on the desktop. If you like Metro, just stay in Metro. If you have a tablet and you don't use it for work, just stay in the Metro environment. If you're using the desktop, well, just stay there. But if you're having a convertible device like I have, then you know you're switching between those two environments. And I, like I showed in the video, it'll be very easy to switch. It'll be faster for everyone saying that the transition is slow. That's because there's over 300 <laughs> layers in After Effects that is not working. I hope people stop asking me to have the download version for this. <laughs> uh, it's just to showcase how the transition could be. Right, well, be that, was, that was the first question we got. We got, where's the download link? I thought it was, a lot of people thought it was a theme. They were like, where's the download link? I want to uh, skin. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's interesting. I kind of think it's this middle ground because I have um, one of Lenovo's yoga machines, which I love. Um, mm. And I, I'm, I'm constantly like, I'm going to break the hinge on these things because I'm like swapping it between tablet and desktop very frequently. Or, or I'm sorry, between Metro and desktop always. Um, so I kind of wonder with your idea, like I, I kind of really like the idea to switch between both, but I'm also, I do it so frequently. You know, like I'm in Metro and I'm typing and I'm just moving around. But I, I kind of wonder how it would transition. Um, the transition, the way I see it, is you let press the Windows button for two seconds. And, you know, you could just give an option how fast you want the transition to be. Fast, mm -hmm. faster, normal, no transition. Just one shot. I actually managed to clap my hands out. It's amazing. <laughs> like my fingers. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, just direct transition. So... It will be actually very easy. Like the time you switch your your your, your yoga, yeah, you will actually already switch the computer. And cool. you know, one day why not? When I, I flip my keyboard from my Surface Two in the back, switch to Metro automatically. You could give a lot of options to users for that. You can even um, you know make it easy. So if I'm actually double clicking on a software with my my mouse, it opens as a classic 
uh, application and desktop, but if I use my finger and automatically open Metro, you could really give a lot of options yeah, for I mean, users. Yeah, that's one of the things I was a little surprised that did not happen. Um, I, I thought we were at the point where we'd be able to distinguish, you know, my touch and then make a decision based on, oh, he needs, you know, because uh, I used to use uh, a, I think, pad that had a pen, you know, one of the old mm. pencils, and I had Windows 8 on it, and it's like it wouldn't, I'd, I'd have it in writing mode so I could scribble something out, and then I'd go and touch it, and I would still think I had the pen, um, so stuff like that is interesting. Now, if you can say, has anyone from Microsoft contacted you or say anything? Um, yes, I'm actually, well, as it is right now, going to Microsoft HQ in Seattle, uh, beginning of January. That's great. To, to talk. So, you know, Microsoft is aware of the situation. Microsoft is aware that um, they need to, 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 to fix Windows 8 a bit. Uh, but you need to understand them. They have a lot on their hands. I mean, the design team at Microsoft, they have all those issues. And... Remember, they can't just do a design and fix all the problems. They have a lot of developers that need to check that everything works, that the whole system is safe for enterprise because enterprise is one of the biggest uh, you know, buyers from Microsoft. They have a lot of things to test, and they just can't push everything they want. That's the problem they have right now, and I think that they're getting faster at deploying ideas, and they know that they really need to fix Windows 8, and, you know, they're looking for more people. Maybe I'm one of them to bring more solutions to the table. Uh, they are aware of the problem, and that is great. They are aware that there's something that they could do. And actually, when I was talking to uh, Albert Chom, one of the director of designs at Microsoft, uh, he even told me that, you know, they were working on integrating the desktop more and finding a solution for that. So they, you know, Microsoft is not stupid. It's a big company. They have a lot of issues in their hand. And they know the problem is there. And if they have more people that actually understands the problem, I think it's better for them. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. We definitely see, um, you know, Microsoft went from their uh, their old-fashioned service packs release to kind of these more frequent updates they'll be doing with the 8.1, 8.2. So it, they're definitely learning something. And I, you know, as much as our audience doesn't like to hear it, they're probably learning something good from Apple here. That yeah, some <laughs> that some small releases are better. Although I know that's painful for. But you know what sucked with eight point one? What sucked with eight point one is that there was absolutely nothing more in the desktop. It was a full Metro upgrade. Yeah. They just upgraded what's on top of the desktop. They did not upgrade in any way the desktop. The only thing they brought back for the desktop is you can now boot directly in it. Which should have been an option on the first place, yeah. Because you, you can't you know decide like you, and, and some users will say well you know if designers want you to go to the start screen first, well you go to the start screen first. And I understand as a default option that makes sense, but what is the problem with giving more options? It it does not hinder the user experience because you you will mess either mess up your operating system by yourself to get that functionality, or you will simply not get the product. Yeah. So well, that's, that's the best part of Windows. You can mess more options. <laughs> you have the ability to uh, kind of play with that. Yes. All right. So what we'll do is we'll hopefully we can follow up with you in uh, January. Here uh, we we hope to hear great things. We uh, definitely there's there's a lot of people. One of the biggest you know comments that we have. We have a you know a lot of readers at uh, Windows on Central. We just hit uh, our three million reader marks. So we're really excited here. Um, so a lot of the comments, uh, were, you know, get Microsoft to hire this guy. So <laughs> we're yeah, that was for you nice. and, uh, we, we hope we can see that in the future. If, if anyone wants to reach out to you online, what, what's, uh, your website, Twitter, anything you want? Uh, they should go on jmashalani.com. Uh, we'll, that's we'll put my a link. Cause that's kind of, yeah, we'll put a link with my name, of course. <laughs> Uh, well, you should go to my website. On the left side, there's my Twitter, my Facebook, whatever. And I'm actually posting more redesigns soon. So right now I'm working on the Steam redesign, which I think that Steam is amazing. But really. again, cool. should have a, a redesign and on a bigger project also. So that's my time, just redesigning stuff for fun and maybe helping people. So Cool. All right, well, we can't wait to see what's coming in the future. We'll be sure to reach out to you. 
Uh, anyone can, of course, follow uh, Windows Phone Central uh, on Twitter at WP Central. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Marcham, that's M A R C H A M 93. Uh, and you can stay tuned to WindowsPhoneCentral.com or using the mobile app on Windows Phone for the latest news. We'll talk to you guys later. Thank you.